Hello Year 7 and welcome to today's lesson. To start off with a knowledge retrieval task, I'd like to think about the work you did for me last week on creative writing. I'd like you to answer the following question. I'd like to give three examples of things you would expect to see in an effective piece of creative writing. I'd like to explain why they are important. So for example, you would expect to see creative descriptions. And that means descriptions that use a lot of adjectives. The reason for that, they're important because they allow the reader to visualize more fully the world that you are creating. So that's my first reason. I'd like you to try and think of at least two other ones. If you can think of three, that's even better. And that should take you about five minutes. When you've done that, move on to the next slide.
Today, we're thinking about different types of language that are used in non-fiction texts. Now, we have looked at some non-fiction texts before. We looked at the Isabella Bird extracts, for example. And this is to help you develop your knowledge of language and be able to identify how language elements are used. And the focus today is on a, uh, a young sailor, or she was young at the time, called Ellen MacArthur. And you'll have found the article that we're looking at attached to the assignment. To start off with, we're going to take a look at the headline, which is the title of the story. And here is part of the headline. Heroes welcome. Heroes welcome. So write down heroes welcome and note down what you think heroes welcome means. What do you think the article is about? What do the words suggest about the people involved? So 30 seconds to note down what you think this article might be about. Right, I've added a little bit more here. What has been added? Heroes welcome as history is made. What does that suggest? So 15 seconds, history is made. What is that added to the headline? And now we've added this subheading, Heroes Welcome as History is Made, Thousands Greet Lone British Sailor. What, what has been added here? Thousands Greet Lone British Sailor. Heroes Welcome as History is Made, Thousands Greet Lone British Sailor. What else do we know? What have we learned from that extra bit of the story? And here's some more. Here is welcome as history is made. Thousands grew lone British sailor at the end of a magnificent round the world adventure. So you can see now that we are we are finding out a lot more about this story. That there is somebody who is a hero. That he or she has been welcomed somewhere. She's arrived. He's arrived. History has been made. Something has been done that's never been done before. Thousands greet lone British sailors. So thousands of people have turned up to meet this hero. We know that he or she is British. We know that he or she is a sailor and that he or she has gone around the world. So we've got a lot of information here about the story. Right, so here, here's the kind of opening thing. Uh, Heroes welcome as history is made. Thousands greet lone British sailor at the end of magnificent round the world adventure. The legend of Ellen MacArthur emerged from the darkness of the Atlantic last night, received a welcome that would have drowned out the storms of the Southern Ocean. So, what might make this an inspirational article to read? What, what do you think we might learn from this article? I'd like to spend about four or five minutes is bullet pointing what you think you are going to learn from this article and then we're going to read the article so four or five minutes note down everything you think that this article might tell you there's some obvious points here and perhaps some others that you can imagine and then i'll read the article and then we're going to analyze the language used and think about how it works so pause the slide when you're ready move on uh, there's a copy of the article attached to this assignment so if you can't see it on the slide you can download it and you probably will need to download it and if you can print it out and stick it in your book all the better otherwise um, <clears throat> you may have to just write bits out but not the whole thing 
Heroes welcome as history is made. Thousands greet lone British sailor Ellen MacArthur at the end of a magnificent round-the-world adventure. Paul Weaver and Paul Calso, The Guardian, 2001. The legend of Ellen MacArthur emerged from the darkness of the Atlantic last night and received a welcome that would have drowned out the storms of the southern ocean. Fireworks, floodlights and flares shone upon this little piece of the Bay of Biscay as MacArthur brought her magnificent Vendee Global Adventure to an end and confirmed second place in the toughest boat race of them all. An ecstatic crowd of more than 200,000, significantly more than welcomed Saturday's winner, Frenchman Michael Desivaux, greeted the youngest, 24, and the smallest, 5 foot 2 inch, competitor in the fleet, the beloved Jeanne Espoir de la Voile, Sailing's Young Hope. Some banners bore her favourite message, Ellen Adolf, go for it. Hundreds of journalists and an assortment of TV crews battled with the crowds for the best vantage point. A flotilla of boats awaited and helicopters circled for a view of this self-confessed geek and solo sailor from the landlocked county of Derbyshire. As the gun fired to mark the end of MacArthur's race, she jumped up and down, pumping the air with her fists in pure joy. She was immediately joined by her jubilant family together with Mark Turner, her project manager. After docking, MacArthur poured champagne over a 60-foot yacht Kingfisher and kissed it before bursting into tears and making a reluctant departure. She said, The boat did it. I was just a pilot. This is all too much. I didn't expect anything like this. I can't explain how I feel because I don't know myself, but I do know I'm happy to finish today. I'm so happy to see my friends, but at the same time, I really don't like to feel like a party tonight. I think I've learned a lot about myself and the boat. You spend a lot of time thinking, reflecting, dreaming about so many things. I have found great pleasure in this race and at the same time have learned so much. All I can say is, bravo, Michel. He sailed a fantastic course. I made several mistakes, but you learn a lot. MacArthur's 94-day voyage has been marked by a succession of near-disastrous mishaps. Within three days of leaving port, she was forced to lance an inflamed finger with a burning hot needle, and on the 30th day awoke to find Kingfisher just 15 metres from an iceberg. Later, she dodged 10 in one day, and while numerous growlers, small chunks of ice broke from the bergs, threatened the hull. The lowest point came when she had to climb the mast in winds reaching 45 knots to release the mainsail after Kingfisher had been knocked onto her side. The effort was nearly fatal. The closest to death I have come, she wrote later in her diary. Physically I am totally exhausted and mentally not so far off. My mind feels like it's been frozen. Just ten days ago, the daggerboard was snapped from the hull when Kingfisher struck a submerged object. MacArthur spent a day hauling the daggerboard, one and a half times her weight, back on board. She admitted she would find it difficult to leave the boat with which she has shared one of the greatest achievements in British sailing history. The last couple of weeks have been very emotional. It's been tough to see King Fisher unable to realise her full potential. Apart from some damage, the yacht was in great shape, amazing after 24,000 miles. I've been cleaning her so she would look beautiful. Her parents, Ken and Avril, who once worried about the little girl who put her bed in the garage and slept in a bag to make more room for her maps and charts, went out to meet her. Mr MacArthur said, Even with new technology, people get lost at sea. There was a moment early on when she could have died. She had to climb down the mast and she'd gone over the edge in terms of her strength and endurance. She and that boat have been married and welded together for three months and she will find it very, very hard to step off it. On Friday, she said half of her was dying to get off and half was dying to stay out there because she knows it's going to be so pressured. She has burst on the scene. MacArthur's feet in becoming the youngest woman to circumnavigate the globe single 
handed has ensured huge interest from publishers. A book based on her email diary could attract offers of around £100,000. So what I'd like to do now is a true or false task. Um, I'd like you to find evidence, uh, quotations that prove the true statements, and I'd like you to correct the false statements. So number one, Ellen MacArthur achieved her goal in 2011. Number two, she arrived at night time, true or false. Number three, many people were present to welcome Ellen. Is that true or false? Number four, she arrived at Hudson Bay. Number five, the crowds well held banners with messages saying welcome home. Number six, Ellen grew up far away from the sea. Number seven, Ellen's family were relieved when she arrived. <clears throat> Eight, Ellen emphasised the importance of the boat. So, the ones that are false, I'd like you to change them to make them true. The ones that are true, I'd like you to find quotes that support those statements. So spend about five minutes doing that, writing them out, and when you're ready, move on to the next slide. Okay, so the first one is false. Ellen MacArthur achieved her goal in 2001. <clears throat> she arrived at night time. That is true, and there is a quote to uh, support that. It says about the um, all the lanterns being lit and the fireworks. Many people were present to welcome Ellen. That is true. There were about 200,000 people there. She arrived at Hudson Bay. Uh, no, she didn't. She arrived at the Bay of Biscay, which is in France. The crowd held banners of message saying, welcome home. Um, they didn't. The banners said something else. Ellen's family grew up away from the sea. They did. They grew up in Derbyshire, which is uh, a landlocked county. Uh, Ellen's family were relieved when she arrived. No, they weren't. I think they were perfectly happy to know that she was safe. Ellen emphasised the importance of the boat. Yes, she did. Previously, we've learned how to annotate poetry, but we don't just need to understand how to do that. We need to think about the how we can understand factual articles as well. We need to consider some of the ideas in the article. We need to consider the emotions and the ideas the words used have they've been designed to connote. Why did the journalist who wrote the article choose to write the article in the way that they did? So we're going to think about annotating parts of the article. Um, we're going to start off with uh, Heroes Welcome as History is Made. I'd like you to copy that into your book, Heroes Welcome as History is Made. And we're going to think about the, some of the words used. Hero. Um, so the word hero connotes that the article is about someone brave and heroic. Because the word hero has connotations of bravery and of adventure. History is made. The term history is made suggests the article about someone who has done something amazing and memorable that has become or will become historical, something that will be remembered for a long time or which has never been done before. So that is what I mean by annotation. So I'm going to give you some parts of the article and I'm going to ask you to annotate them. So make sure you've copied that in your book as an example, as a waggle, and then we more. The first um, part of the article I'd like to copy in your books is this. The legend of Ellen MacArthur emerged from the darkness of the Atlantic last night and received a welcome that would drown out the storms of the Southern Ocean. We're going to focus on three words from that, or three phrases. The first one, the legend. Why do you think the word legend has been used? So what are the connotations of the word legend? And think back to the previous slide and the word hero. What do heroes and legends have in common? What is a legend and why might this story be a legend? The second phrase, emerged from the darkness. Now, 
Why do you think that phrase has been used? What does the word emerge mean? And why might Ellen have emerged from the darkness? What effect does that have? We think about this moment of history, this historical moment, this young sailor returning from this incredible adventure and she emerges from the darkness. What's the effect of that? A welcome that would have drowned out the storms of the southern ocean. This is a, an example of a of a hyperbole, which is dramatic over exaggeration, and a metaphor, a welcome that would have drowned out the storms of the southern ocean. Why has this metaphor been used and what does it suggest about MacArthur's welcome? So what is it about the uh, why is the southern ocean being mentioned? Why have the storms of the Southern Ocean been mentioned? And why is um, this, the scale of the welcome being emphasised? Make sure you've copied out the quotation. Make sure you've answered those three questions. When you've done that, move on to the next slide. So this is the next the next phrase I'd like you to analyse. Again, you need to write this out if you can't print it out. Fireworks, floodlights and flares shone upon this little piece of the Bay of Biscay as MacArthur brought her magnificent Vendier Globus adventure to an end and confirmed second place in the toughest boat race of them all. I'll start with fireworks, floodlights and flares. So there are two language techniques that are used here. Fireworks, floodlights and flares what two techniques are used to grab the reader's attention fireworks floodlights and flares then the word magnificent what does the word magnificent mean and why do you think it's been used why do you think ellen MacArthur's adventure was magnificent At the end of this, the toughest boat race of them all. Again, this is a, 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 a hyperbole. So what is the effect of this hyperbole? How is it meant to make us feel about MacArthur? So answer those three questions. And then when you're ready, move on to the next slide. It should take you about five minutes, by the way. Okay, a flotilla of boats awaited and helicopters circled for a view of this self-confessed geek and solo sailor from the landlocked county of Derbyshire. Now, a flotilla is basically like a little fleet, a lot of little, a lot of boats and helicopters. So, what is this? Think about this image of the, all these little boats waiting for MacArthur, the helicopters flying around. What what effect does that create for the reader? What's the effect of that image? Why do you think it's been used? Why do you think they've given that bit of information about Derbyshire being landlocked? What does that add to the article, that little bit of information? How is that designed to make the reader feel about MacArthur? Again, try and answer those questions. Take about three or four minutes when you've done that. Move on to the next slide. This is the last bit of the article we're going to analyse. Uh, within three days of leaving port, she was forced to lance an inflamed finger with a burning hot needle. And on the 30th day, I woke to find Kingfisher just 15 metres from an iceberg. But why do you think that bit of information about the amount of time before the first problem, why do you think it's been given within three days of leaving? What is the effect of the re on the reader? The image of the lance, uh, lancing an inflamed finger with a burning hot needle, that's a very graphic image. It doesn't leave much to the imagination. It's quite a shocking image. Why do you think that's been included? What effect do you think the journalists wanted to have on the reader? And finally, uh, she awoke on the 30th day, awoke to find Kingfisher just 15 metres from an iceberg. What does that suggest about MacArthur's experience just 15 meters from an iceberg what why has that information been included in the article what is that designed to uh, what effect is that designed to have on the reader so you should have uh, four sections of the article as well as the waggle 
written in your books with clear annotations. It should take overall that should have taken you about 20 minutes and move on to the final task. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to decide what you think the most important piece of information from the article is. I'd like to explain why. So, for example, if you think the most important piece of information from the article is that MacArthur was a solo sailor from the landlocked county Derbyshire, I'd like you to explain why that, it, it, that is important. I'd also like you to decide which piece of information you think is the least important. And again, I'd like you to explain why. So what was the most important bit of information? What is the least important information in full sentences explaining why? When you've completed that task, I'd like to photograph your work. That includes your knowledge retrieval task. It includes your notes about the article and your annotations. And it includes this final piece. I'd like to make sure that you uh, attach that work. Make sure it's uploaded to the assignment. Make sure that you turn the assignment in. And then that is it.